Hi guys and welcome to Motoscotti. So if you watched my last video, you might remember that the error message engine fault repair needed came up and I then checked the recirculation valve because I thought that that might be the issue. So since the recirculation, recirculation valve was in perfect shape, I had to dig a little bit deeper. So now what? Go to the dealer and have them fix it? Nah, no way. I'm gonna do it myself. So I simply plugged in a diagnostics tool a very cheap one, one I got from the French website where I basically just got the ODB connector uh, which I then plug into the car and on the other end to a laptop where I got the free software hence the readout from the software was in French. So get your diagnostics tool ready, plug it in, turn on the ignition and press diagnose. So let's have a look at the readout. It's the exhaust gas recirculation, short EGR that is faulty and within that it's the second lambda sensor, so it's the second oxygen sensor that is faulty. The second oxygen sensor. So what exactly does that mean? Hmm. So first of all, what is an oxygen sensor? How does it work? Where is it located? Let's get a look at last video's drawing and get some theory done, shall we? Internal combustion engines powered by unleaded fuel use catalytic converters to reduce the emissions carbon monoxide, hydrocarbon and soot. For the engine and thus the catalytic converter to work at their best, first of all, the engine needs to set up the optimal fuel oxygen ratio. This is done by the mass airflow sensor. The oxygen sensors go to work in the exhaust. One before the catalytic converter and one after. The first one, the lambda control sensor, measures what amount of oxygen is left in the exhaust to further improve the amount of fuel being injected depending if it's running lean or rich. The second oxygen sensor, the monitor sensor, is located after the catalytic converter and measures the efficiency of it. If it's running efficiently, the oxygen level should be higher than on the first sensor because the catalytic converter partly converted the, the emissions into oxygen. Bottom line, it's possible to run without the oxygen sensors, however, the engine wouldn't run as efficiently as it could. Right, so let's go and replace the oxygen sensor. To do that, we're going to need the following tools and parts. A diagnostic tool, as we just saw before. A 22mm wrench, ideally with a closed end. A little bit of anti-seize, copper grease for example. And a brand new oxygen sensor. You'll find the part number in the description, as always of course. And just to be on the safe side, I recommend you have a few more tools within reach. A hammer, eye protection, a set of pliers, a small flathead screwdriver and a little unclipping tool. Alright, time to take a look into this beast. Actually, since the sensor is screwed in at the bottom, let's put the car on ramps and secure it with the wheel chocks. And since the engine might still be hot, let it cool down before you go near the exhaust. And if it's still summer when you're watching this video, Go outside and have dessert in the meantime. Right, back to work. Let's go under the car. This is where the sensor is screwed into the exhaust and that's where the connector is plugged in with the CPU. Lift the red top and unplug the connector simultaneously. Now simply unclip the blue connector from its bracket. What seemed to be the easy part ended up being a total pain in the ass. Pushing and pulling it at it from below and from the opposite side by hand and with pliers, it just wouldn't come off. Ultimately, I got it released with the help of a flat and very thin clip. The plastic came off, but I'm replacing it anyway, so no worries. Now cut the cable with the pliers to insert the closed end of the 22mm wrench. The idea is not to damage the knot of the sensor with the open side of the wrench. Given its connection with the exhaust pipe, the sensor could be stuck and it's not a good idea to spray it with WD-40 first, because if any of that oil gets on the new sensor, you can throw that one away immediately too. Anyway, this one came out very easily. Let's compare the old with the new one. As you can see, the new one is not exactly the same as the old one. It's a little bit wider and has more holes in it, but it will work just fine. Before you install it, put some anti-seize on the thread only. 
I use some copper grease. But be careful not to put any on the sensor. Screw it back on and fasten it just a little bit more than hand tight. Reconnect the cable to the bracket in the middle and the connector to the end bracket. Now reconnect the two cables while firmly pushing down the red button. And we are done! So, did it work? Is my car finally fixed? And doesn't have to spend the rest of the summer and this beautiful summer inside the garage? Well, not quite. Well, here's the story. I went through all the trouble and hassle to take the recirculation valve out, and then look at the oxygen sensor, buy a new oxygen sensor and, and change that one, but I didn't check the most basic things I had to do in the first place. The fuel, yes. Remember last video when I was telling you about the road trip? Engine fault repair engine came up just after a fabulous road trip from Dublin, Ireland to the UK, France, the Black Forest in Germany. Exactly. This is what I didn't have in mind. We drove through France and we filled up the car twice with what? With the 95 E10 fuel, meaning it's the 95 octane unleaded fuel with 10% ethanol. Ethanol! Which changes everything. But, although my owner's manual says, clearly says, states that uh, my RCZ can take up to 10% of ethanol in its fuel, well, it didn't work. So what did I do? Since the tank was almost empty at the time where I was fixing it, I drove over to the nearest uh, petrol station, filled it up with the best fuel, and then immediately as I started, as I turned the key, as I started the car, the fault message was gone, the full power was back, so it was as, as though nothing had ever happened. So I went through all this trouble of checking the recirculation valve, of uh, getting through to the oxygen sensor and even buying a new oxygen sensor, even though the, the first one was probably all right. In the end, it was just the fuel. But you know what? I didn't do this for nothing. At least now you know. First of all, if you ever encounter this problem, check the fuel. And if it doesn't work, you now you know how to check the recirculation valve you know how to change the oxygen sensor, and you know how they work. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. You can leave them there on YouTube, or also reach out to me on my uh, Facebook page. So I hope this was helpful, and as always, until next time.